All right, I'd like to thank uh, everybody for sticking around for the last half an hour. I hope you enjoyed a lunch and a quick bite to eat. Uh, we are going to go ahead and call the meeting of the Washington Hearing Society to order. Uh, whether you are a member or not, you are more than welcome to attend. This will be worth one hour of continuing education. So uh, even if it doesn't take an hour to go through the entire meeting, you'll oh, still get an hour of, of CE credit for this. Um, I'm going to put up the agenda. And as I do the, put the agenda up for everybody to see, um, we'll have uh, Kristen read the roll call. Um, if you are present, please say present. If you're not, of course, you're not going to say anything, right? Um, probably so probably be a good idea for everyone to unmute their mics for just a minute. Yeah, that would be great. Thank you. <clears throat> As Wagner finally gets the right kicking unit out there. A little bit of confusion on the Wagner side. And because of that, they're actually going to take a delay a game penalty. Oh, somebody's watching the football game. <laughs> oh, my grandson plays for Wagner College in New York. <laughs> oh, that's right. And he's playing a game, and so it's on my phone. <laughs> Can you turn your phone down, maybe? I'm thinking I'm, I'm going to just have to get out. I don't think it'll let me go mute. <laughs> And the extra points will get through the upper. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Sounds like an exciting game. Maybe you could just use your microphone. Oh, I'm just going to turn it, go in and turn it off. And I'll come back when we're done. <laughs> That's all right. I have three birthday parties this afternoon. So when Ted was talking this morning, I was, I was, uh, um, Making the carrot cake. Somebody wanted a carrot cake. So I was out here making a carrot cake. <laughs> I, thought, I saw Listening. you with mixing bowls. So I was wondering what you were doing. I thought maybe you were making. I did. They wanted homemade carrot cake. All right. And yes. And so I was making the carrot cake. And so I, now I got the stuff out for frosting. But I do. I got a birthday party for a one year old, a seven year old, and a 50 year old <laughs> all this afternoon. All right, well. <laughs> and trying to watch the football game because my daughter will text me. Sounds good. Okay, um, Kristen, if you would read the roll call, please. Uh, yes, and just as a reminder, uh, this roll call is going to be for uh, WHS voting mm -hmm. members. Uh, and I wanna send a quick shout out to all the students and associate members that are here. Uh, thank you all for being here. Um, if you are an associate or a student, um, you may not hear your name. Uh, so if you don't hear it, uh, that's okay. But um, if you think that your name should be uh, stated in the roll call and you didn't hear it, please reach out to myself, Connie, or Heather. All right, let's get started. We have Carl Ahrens. I believe as proxy I have for present for him then. Yes, thank you. Uh, Cheryl Ahrens. I believe the same thing. Okay. Lonnie Bowling. Is Lonnie here? Carmen Brown. Is Carmen here? Keith Kane. Nicole Cotronio. Right, Anna Lee Corson. I'm here. Thank you. Richard Daniels. William Devaney. Here. Thank you. Brenda Drake. Do we have a Brenda Drake. So she's not here, but I am, and I'm with. I'm. We're usually together. But. Do you are, are you gonna be her proxy? I guess. Yes. Mara Hitzlog. Jolene Fairchild. Shannon Flanagan. 
Diane Fox. Connie Here. Fury. Here. Thank you, Connie. Rick Giles. Present. Peter Gunmanson. Jody Higman. Here. Thank you, Jody. <laughs> Diane Hostetter Taylor. Here. Thank you, Diane. Sandy Hubbard. Are you it? Sandy here today. Sandy and her husband are enjoying their anniversary, so she is in Chelan. Oh. All right. Jennifer Isabel. Cur uh, Carrie Johnson. Terry Johnson. Here. Thanks, Carrie Terry. should be. Carrie should be there as well. Carrie, are you here? Doreen Keeter. Present. Thank you, Doreen. Gary Lanthrop. Gary, are you here? Yep, I'm here. Thanks, Gary. Sherry Loveland. Maureen McGovern. De Deborah Miller. Elizabeth Miller. I'm here. Thank you, Elizabeth. Tammy Miller. Tammy? Uh, Terry Mongrain. Present. Thank you, Terry. Leo Altman. Leo? How about Randy Parr? Mark Pierce? Ann Plotnick? Stephen Rickards, Sherry Rogers, Jesse Sawyer, Ron Schur, Schreier. Thank you, Ron. Dorothy Sherwood, Pamela Pamela Spencer, Robert Stevens. Dixon Stopper, Jane Strampfer. Do we have a Brian Wall? Um, Paula, sorry. I think Brian is here, but I think he's having technical difficulties. Okay, I will mark him here for now. Uh, Paula Webster. Keith Wilson and Rebecca Winters. He is doing cruise to the end of the world this weekend. All right. Well, that should wrap us up. Robert Shepard, I, I pay my dues every year. For some reason, I never end up on your list. Robert Shepard? Yeah. <laughs> I will put you down. Thank you. <laughs> uh, I, do have, I do have Becky uh, Winters proxy. Okay, great, I will mark her here. Thank you. All right, for those of you who did not hear your name, we would love to have you as a member. And you most probably paid $125 to attend this conference. Um, we would love to apply $50 of that to your membership, which will carry you through the end of 2021. So if you are one of those people, we are going to be reaching out to you personally. Uh, think about that because a member of a society is only as strong as its members. We represent you in front of the Washington State Board of Hearing and for Speech. Uh, we also have successfully done uh, several pieces of legislation that has made your life as a hearing professional um, much more, much easier uh, you are still in practice and in business as a hearing aid specialist. Uh, and I can almost assure you without the Washington Hearing Society, that would be endangered in the state of Washington. Um, we also are a chapter of the International Hearing Society. And the International Hearing Society, as you heard on Thursday night, uh, is representing you in front of the halls of Congress. Uh, if you could think of just the airline trip back and forth to Washington, D.C., 
the expense of that, the expense of staying in a hotel for a couple of nights, uh, and the expense of your food and beverages while you're in Washington, D.C., we do that for you. Uh, and that makes your membership a very, very, very reasonable price. Uh, our professional membership for those who are licensed in Washington State uh, is $150, which is far less expensive than most memberships in professional societies. So we'll talk about a little bit about that uh, in, a, in, a, in a minute. Um, uh, we do have the, the minutes of the last meeting to read. Um, Kristen, are you ready to do that? Yes, I am. Can I, can I interrupt for just one second, Kristen? Um, I've just got a couple texts that Ling Ling Yin is also here. I'm not sure if you have her on your list. Ling Ling Yin? Yes. Y W Y N. And right. also Carrie Johnson Moonen and Brian Wall. I'm sorry, can you say that, uh, the last two names? Carrie, Carrie Johnson. Carrie Johnson Moonen. Okay. And Brian Wall. I think you got him though. I did get Brian Wall. Thank you. Okay. All right. Perfect. Sorry. All right. Thank you. Uh, okay. Uh, the meeting, uh, the minutes for the last meeting, we had a call to order. Uh, we had a roll call of membership by, from Maureen. Then we had our uh, IHS report from Don Tucker. He is our Pacific governor. Uh, we discussed um, OTC hearing aids. Um, we talked about the COVID delay implementation, uh, Im implementation of those OTC devices. Uh, he talked about some other uh, House of Representative legislation uh, for hearing aids. Um, and then he elaborated uh, professional development services and other benefits uh, from being uh, that IHS offers members. From there, we had the meeting, uh, minutes from the previous meeting uh, introduced by Maureen Gov McGovern, and then we had the treasurer's report. Uh, that was brought on by Ms. Connie, and we showed a profit of $10,000. We received $50,000 uh, from the HAS program, $24,000 from the auction, and $3,400 from membership, due membership dues. The total revenue was $77,000. Um, we had a legislative report from Rick Giles. Uh, we we're talking about, um, zero was on. Uh, we talked about how a report that the bill is dead at this point, you know, a lot of this is having to, you know, is COVID related. Then we had the Washington Health, uh, Department of Health of, uh, brought by Connie Fury. We discussed new requirements that include section four regarding assistive technology on our purchase agreements. Uh, she also told us about the, uh, the Department of Health resuming tests, testing for licensures. From there, we have Bob Shepard with Tri-State. I uh, talked about the, uh, they're gonna hold its 50th anniversary meeting in March of 2022 in Portland. Um, and then we had Tammy Miller who talked about education. Uh, we have training ma uh, materials available to members um, and talked about the convention and expo in San Diego from August 12th to 14th. Uh, we talked about tinnitus care, provider certification, uh, certification programs, and the IHS practical exam committee. Uh, we did discuss old business. That was Sandy Hubbard. Uh, Hubbard. We did the Haas program update. Um, we've had a really wonderful year and things going really well with the HAS program. From there, we moved on to new business. Uh, we had Rick Giles talking about membership for both hearing aid specialists and audiologists. We uh, would like to welcome everyone to the Washington Hearing Society. Uh, we emphasized uh, Washington Hearing Society advocacy of Washington State legislat uh, Legislature and meeting presence. Uh, from there, we had election of officers and Elizabeth Miller, Terry Mongrain, and Leo Altman were elected to the y, uh, WHS Board of Directors. Finally, we had a thank you uh, and a, uh, from Connie Fury and a Q&A. All right, are there any uh, additions or corrections to the minutes? Uh, not that I'm aware of. 
I would entertain a motion that we accept the minutes as presented. I second. Okay, all in favor, uh, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, Aye. same signal. Hearing none, the minutes are accepted as uh, presented. Elizabeth, are you ready for the treasurer's report? Sorry, I'm here. Can you hear me okay? Yep. All right, I am at Great Wolf Lodge right now and using my AirPods and they were not connecting to the laptop. <laughs> okay, so... So for the treasury report, um, we have cash on hand of 158,535 and 32 cents. Uh, total income from January 1st to September, we have 67,397 cents. Most of our income has been from the house program. That income was 44,675. And 22,693 was from the society's general fund. Our last summer meeting and auction brought in $20,775. Our membership fees for this year were only a hundred, uh, sorry, $1,771 and 25 cents. Um, as we all know and talked about, we just need to increase that. Total expenses are $48,726.40. Most of our expenses were from payroll of a total of $36,784. So thank you for, thanks Connie for writing this up. So basically we're in a good financial state right now. We just need to continue to work hard and we really just need to start working on increasing our memberships. Um, so thank you all for continued membership and thank you who have donated and purchased items in the auction. Uh, we just need continued support. Um, normally we have meetings in person um, and hand out the profit and loss statements and balance sheets. So if you'd like a copy of this, um, you can contact Heather Dillon and you can find her contact information on the website. All right, uh, we'll accept the treasurer's report as submitted unless there's objection. Hearing none, the uh, treasurer's report is accepted as presented. Uh, next, we're gonna move on to committee reports. And I think the first thing we probably need to talk about is again, <clears throat> membership. Uh, your participation in the society is critical for us to be able to represent you in front of the legislature. Uh, we go in and we can meet, we'll meet with uh, legislative legislators or their assistants who are actually more important than meeting the actual legislator. Uh, and we will be asked frequently, how many people do you represent? Uh, currently there are 298 licensed hearing aid specialists in the state of Washington. There are about 350 audiologists. Uh, most audiologists in the state are required to be members of WASHA, which is the Washington Audiology Association. Uh, and currently, I think the last count our membership was, Connie, correct me if I'm wrong, in the high 30s, 35, maybe 40? I think, I think 40 something at best. Okay. Um, <laughs> so when we go up to the legislature and we're saying we're representing the Washington Hearing Society and they say, uh, how many people do you have in your society? Uh, we'll say, well, we have about 40 members. Um, if we are in a legislate of, I'm not gonna say, the word battle is wrong, but if we're in a legislative discussion with a proposed bill that could possibly, possibly negatively affect uh, the hearing aid specialist position, uh, when we go in and represent that with that low of a number compared to 400, uh, it makes us look really weak in comparison. Uh, fortunately, in the past, we've uh, been able to retain a very high, high, uh, a very well-respected uh, lobbyist, and she has uh, single-handedly um, allowed us to pass some of the current legislation that we are, are, are all using. Um, at this point in the Washington state law, uh, hearing aid specialists and audiologists are considered equal when it comes to hearing aids and the scope of practice. Uh, in some of the neighboring states, that is not the case. Uh, in Oregon, for example, a hearing aid specialist may not turn on an 
a tinnitus masker without a direct written prescription by a physician of any type. It doesn't have to be an ear, nose, and throat physician. It could be a podiatrist or a, 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 a psychologist. Uh, anybody that is an, has an MD is able to write that prescription, even just the family doctor. We all know that, that those uh, doctors, as well respected as they are, and with as much education as they have, have very little knowledge about tinnitus. Uh, we are seeing the tinnitus uh, subject come up uh, state by state by state uh, around the nation. And we really need to have your support as not only a paying member, uh, but more importantly, as a member for numbers. So if you're interested in that, reach out to me. You can reach out to any of the board of directors, uh, Connie or Sandy or uh, Kristen or, 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 or uh, Elizabeth um, or Terry. And um, a, new, a new director will be uh, uh, electing today um, with, you know, with your name. We're more than happy to talk about that. Uh, and if you don't reach out to us, expect to hear, expect to receive a phone call from us because we really need your presence. Connie, do you have anything else to add? As far as membership discussion, membership, I I don't think so. Other than you know, most of the people on here right now are members and have been for a long time, but um, <clears throat> so. We need to, you to reach out to your colleagues and friends and people who aren't members and explain to them why, just like what Rick said, we need numbers and help us recruit. Are there any members on that would have, would like to interject or have questions for us? All right, hearing none, we'll move on to legislative. Uh, a couple of things to keep in mind legislatively. Um, first of all, we're, we're currently in off session, so this, the legislature is not in session. Uh, the 2022 legislature starts uh, first week of January. Uh, it is what we call a short session, so that, sh that session is limited in time. Um, very rarely do we have any, see any type of legislation that moves through that that could affect our profession, um, but you never know. It can happen at the last second. Uh, the International Hearing Society monitors all legislative bills across the nation, and we are notified if there's anything that happens to affect the hearing aid specialists. Um, like I mentioned before, we do have a lobbyist that works for us uh, on, on a part-time basis. She's not on retainer, uh, but she will step in and, and represent us uh, if we ask, and we, we have no idea how, how uh, wonderful it is to be able to have somebody for a caliber as, as our lobbyist. Uh, last legislative session, as I said, the, 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 big, uh, the only bill that related to our profession uh, was the audiology compact. And what the audiology compact would do was allow audiologists in that compact of different states to practice across straight lines um, with only a, uh, it's, 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 it's a license in that state, but it's, it's not, really a license. In, in, in other words, uh, as a hearing aid specialist or as an audiologist, if I have, if I'm not licensed in the state of Arizona and I have a, one of my call it, one of my patients or clients who is in Arizona maybe for the winter, I can't go into uh, my telehealth uh, application with my hearing aid fitting and make any adjustments to the hearing aid while they're in Arizona without being licensed in Arizona even though the primary residence is in Washington. Uh, and that is true around the nation. If you're licensed in the state you're licensed in, uh, you can only perform services while that person is resident in one of those states, even if it's overnight. Um, fortunately, I'm licensed in both Oregon and Washington, so I can practice in both states. Uh, but again, like a lot of people, we have people who are, uh, you know, who go to California, for example, or Arizona for the wintertime. And if they have a problem with their hearing aid, I can't reach out and do any type of telehealth. I can talk to them on the phone, but I can't do anything else. What the audiology compact for audiologists does is allow them to do that. Uh, so they can just register in the state that they would like to practice in uh, remotely and be able to do that. So I, 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 
the Washington Hearing Society uh, took a neutral stance on that last year. We didn't think that that was a bad thing. Uh, and hopefully as time goes on, if we can get some type of standardization of education um, around the nation, uh, that we can, as hearing aid specialists, also perform some type or, or enact some type of, audio, of, of compact, um, like the audiologist and the audiologist has it, it would be a much easier step uh, for us to do that down the road. Um, any questions on audiology compact? All right, um, COVID vaccine. As of October 10th, the governor has said, if you work in any form of healthcare, and that includes our offices, whether you're a licensed person or a front office person, uh, you must be vaccinated for COVID-19, uh, fully vaccinated. You have until October 18th to do that, uh, which means that your first shot should happen uh, if you have not had it yet sometime this week in order to be fully vaccinated. Uh, by the time October 18th rolls around, uh, if you were unvaccinated, you will not be able to practice legally. Uh, if, the, if there's anything, that, an issue that ever came up in your office and you or any of your staff was unvaccinated, uh, you could easily lose your license. So I'm encouraging those people who for one reason or another have decided not to be vaccinated at this point, uh, no political, uh, you know, no more political intent intended whatsoever. Uh, this is your ability to practice and continue to operate at business. So, uh, make sure if you're unvaccinated, you, you get that vaccine, uh, regardless of any of your personal concerns about freedom or your political or your religious uh, standing. If you want to practice, you have to be vaccinated. That's all there is to it. Um, assistive listening technologies. Uh, there is a new section that has been added to the to the uh, uh, those technologies. I will send out a sample contract to everybody who registered for this event, whether you're on the meeting or not. Uh, we'll also have that posted on our website. Uh, if you are signing, if you're fitting hearing aids and selling hearing aids now, and you do not have that section four on your purchase agreement, your purchase agreement is null and void. That does two things. First of all, you are selling a hearing aid without a contract or purchase agreement, which is against state law. And again, that could affect your ability to practice uh, and lose your license possibly. Uh, but secondly, there is no time limit for returning hearing aids. So five years from now, if you don't have that on your contract uh, and it is enforced now, uh, someone could come back and they you would be required to give 100% of the money back uh, to that individual. So keep that in the back of your mind. If you need a copy of the contract, we're happy to give it to you. Like I say, I will send you a copy of that and we'll also have that on our website. Any questions about assistive listening technologies? All right, I hope you have. I hope everyone has that on their contract. And if not, uh, you're gonna wanna do that uh, first thing you go in the office Monday morning. Um, Connie, do you wanna talk to us about the Washington Department of Health? Um, <clears throat> I think you kind of wrapped up the couple of things that I had already. Um, I don't really have anything. The Department of Health is uh, very, very backlogged because of COVID as far as getting any new rulemaking done. Um, I even actually called Kim Boy, who is the program manager um, for our uh, speech and hearing, and to see if she had anything new. And she said, not really, Connie, everything is just completely backlogged. Um, the only other thing I can add to what you talked about, Rick, is I don't even know if it's worth mentioning, but the next rule writing that some people are trying to um, poke through is they are wanting to change our definition of what reasonable cause is to return hearing aids. I've been hearing a lot of talk about that. Um, I hope that doesn't get much teeth because that's going to open up a huge can of worms, I think. But um, there were a couple of cases where dispensers did not want to refund money to patients. It went to the disciplinary committee. Disciplinary committee is not agreeing with the dispenser's point of view. So anyway, they're, they're wanting to clarify that and rewrite that. So I don't think we'll be hearing much talk about that for another year or so, but I know that's in the works. Don't know what it means, but it's in the works. 
any questions on the Department of Health? Uh, and Connie is one of our is our board member. Uh, she represents uh, the, she she represents the public for the state of Washington. But it's also very nice to have uh, one of our board members on the Department of Health uh, board for hearing and speech. Uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, we share that board that, that position that, that that board we share that with audiologists uh, and speech language pathologists. And as far as number goes, numbers go again. We are we have the least number of people that we represent. Yeah. One more thing is um, I, I represent the hearing instrument specialists on that board, but they have been looking for a board member represent, I mean, a public member representative for a year now. So if anyone's interested or has a colleague, even your front desk people would be great um, to get on that board. And if, if you're interested, please reach out to me. Because they, like I said, they've been looking for a public member for well over a year now for that position. We all have those uh, clients of ours that are very pro, they love you, they think you're the greatest thing in the world. Um, and that's the type of person we'd love to have represented on the board as a public member. Yeah. Uh, we have in the past had uh, someone as a public member who had a bad experience with their hearing aid specialist. And uh, that created quite a few issues when we were uh, trying to make new rules. So uh, if you have, a, if you've got one of those people who wants to uh, spend a, an hour, a couple of hours, a quarter, um, it's a, a very worthwhile thing to do. And it would, it would also be very advantageous for us to have a strong advocate on our side uh, as a public member for the Department of Health. Uh, Connie, just a quick question, um, if it has come up, I know we've spoken about this in the past, um, any, any news or anything talking about a definition of an audiology assistant? No, that's, it's been brought up, but not at the board level yet. Okay. Um, at this point, audiology assistants, anybody can be an audiology assistant if you're an audiologist and you call that person an audiology assistant. There's no definition. There are no guidelines. There are no requirements for training or education. Um, and they can do anything that an audiologist tells them they can do. Uh, however, if there's a complaint and it's an audiology assistant that has made, say, changes to a hearing aid, modified a hearing aid, uh, that audiologist is a person who's, who's licensed is responsible. So does that answer your question, Terry? Well, but I... Um, partially, I just I just wanted to know if there was an update on that because I know that that has come up in the past that they were trying to define um, um, the scope of practice and what the audiology assistant could do. Um, not from the Department of Health, not from the Board yeah, of Women's Speech. It's not come up in any of the meetings yet, but okay. I, I I know I hear rumblings about it. Yeah. <clears throat> Um, do we know from the Department of Health what kind of requirement or documentation for COVID vaccinations businesses are required to provide, like the state? Is that something, like, do you have to show proof of vaccination records? Like, how is that being implemented? I, uh, no, you're as, you as the employer, your employer is responsible for assuring that. There's nobody going to come checking on your door. Um, but if there's an outbreak, if there's a COVID outbreak in your facility, if there's, an COVID out, if there's a COVID case traced back to your facility and there is somebody on there who's not vaccinated, um, that could mean some real problems for that for the licensee. Okay, thank you. Or if somebody turns you in, they're probably going to come check you out. Absolutely. Could the business be in any jeopardy, like losing, or is it more to the individual? It's to the, the only... The only thing the Department of Health has has any type of authority over is you as a licensee. Your license. Okay, thank you. I can remember back uh, to when I was on the board as a, a member on the disciplinary hearing committee. Uh, we had an individual who um, had a prior conviction for uh, DUI 25 years ago. Um, that person was stopped for speeding. They, in their possession, had a prescription medication that was in a bottle that did not label the prescription medication with her name on it. 
Um, she was brought up before a disciplinary hearing uh, for that and came this close to losing her license as, as a licensed professional. Um, so the Department of Health has, uh, has very, very broad powers over you as a licensee. That's just one, rec you know, one example of, of many, many cases that have gone before the Department of Health. All right, any other questions on the Department of Health? Uh, you want to update us on Tri-State, Connie and Bob? I was going to say, I, I guess I should have looked at the agenda better so I would have been more prepared, but Bob, maybe you can help me or talk? Oh, sure. Um, it's the, the second weekend in March next year. It's going to be there in uh, Portland at Embassy Suites. Um, we are returning to an earlier format where we're bringing back the Saturday night uh, banquet, which has always been a been a highlight of the the meeting. The speakers, um, I'm not totally sure, uh, but I, I don't know if a lot of you are aware that uh, Bill Austin was raised in Oregon, and Starkey was very very instrumental early on with uh, Tri-State, gave us a lot of support. Um, and then Bill Austin's uncle had Audubell Wholesale there in Portland. Uh, at any rate, Bill is aware that this is going to be the last Tri-State Convention and he is coming out. Uh, Brandon Swalik, who's the current CEO, uh, is coming out. And then another person from Starkey, one of the audiologists who I don't know are coming out. And I believe that their topic of discussion is going to be the OTC um, hearing aid situation. Uh, we also have Doug Beck, uh, Ted Venema, who you heard this morning, uh, Gus Mueller, um, Tammy Franklin will be there doing uh, an update on the infection control because as you know, that's required for a lot of people and those of us involved here with this today had it, but not everybody was here today. Um, I, I think that there's another speaker, but I'm not sure. At, at any rate, this is gonna be our last one. We would certainly encourage you all to come and join us and, and have a good time. And uh, any suggestions, anything that you would like to see or would like to happen at the meeting. It's possible that we could work things into the agenda. Just let your state uh, people know. So in the state of Washington, of course, you've got Connie and then you've got Keith Wilson um, as your tri-state board members. So um, anybody have any questions? I mean, I, that was just kind of like a brief summary, but if you have any questions that I could answer, I'll be happy to do that. I've been to tri-states, uh, every tri-state there was since 1986. Uh -huh. And it is a very good time. Uh, everyone has a wonderful time and they throw a great party and it's an excellent way to get to network with friends. Um, the International Hearing Society Convention just ended in San Diego. Uh, I was able to, to meet and greet and spend some time with, with friends that I hadn't seen in over a year. So I highly recommend when, that, when you get that uh, notification uh, send in your registration. It's well worth your time and effort. Yeah, I'd also like to, to point out, we did get a question about COVID protocol for the meeting. And of course, that's going to be decided as we get closer. We're not sure what the COVID situation is going to be in March, but we'll, whatever it is, we'll deal with it appropriately. Uh, I just got a message uh, on chat. Uh, somebody who is... Uh, one of her uh, managers uh, kind of manages the overall business, uh, says she has some information on the government. Uh, they will audit businesses on the vaccine. They will most likely do random checks. Uh, you, uh, as a business owner, uh, will upload records to your staff, uh, religious forms if you're accepting them. It will then be checked on a large database to make sure the vaccine info is real. If it is not, there will be fines, possible legal action. That does not fall on the owner as long as they're not aware of the of course, but it's best for every business owner to have a file on each employee with all their vaccine information. So 
a little bit more stringent than what I mentioned. So keep that in the back of your mind, okay? All right, uh, old business. I'm, is there any other current committee reports? Let me, let me, put, let me say that first. No, nope, let's go on to old business. Um, Sandy and her husband are enjoying a, a, a retreat. Uh, it is their anniversary. Um, so I'm going to have Connie go ahead and give the hearing a specialist report. Sorry, I don't have it to share on my screen with you. So you're just gonna have to listen to me, I guess. Uh, the house program has been, uh, it's five years old now and is growing strong. There have been 37 graduates since we started in 2016. 33 out of those 37 are still working in the industry. This is a fantastic statistic and we are very proud of this result from our program. There are 18 students currently enrolled. 11 of the 18 enrolled uh, in 2021, our annual goal is nine. So we're having a great year. Special thanks to all of you who have participated and have also sponsored students in the program. We couldn't do it without you. If you'd like more information about the program, obviously reach out to Sandy. Um, she does list her number here. Also, you can reach her at sandyh at washingtonhearing.org. The practical exam is coming up this month on the 24th. So we wish those who are registered the best of luck. Uh, Sandy said, I will have a licensed prep session with the candidates on September 15th. So if you're joining us today and want more information on this session, please again contact Sandy. Um, please check out our auction. We will be funding our scholarship program for the remainder of the year and 2022 with a percentage of the proceeds from the auction. All right, thank okay. you very much. Um, and I, I, like I say, Connie and I both were at IHS in San Diego a couple of weeks ago uh, and the Washington Hearing uh, Aid Specialist Training Program is kind of the envy of the nation. So we are setting precedent hopefully for the nation. People are very, very impressed with how that is working. Uh, we do use the International Hearing Society Training Program, but this is a very well organized, very well formatted program. If you have any possible uh, future employees are looking at it, it's highly recommended as a program to, uh, to go through. Any questions for Connie? All right, let's move on to new business then. Uh, the next one we have is election of officers. So we did an election in March. We generally uh, have just one election a year, uh, but we were short one possible board member. And uh, I appointed that person. We need to, as a society, we need to uh, uh, um, approve them uh, as, as a member. So your current board at this point is our, our, past, uh, our past president is Connie. Uh, I'm the current president. Uh, the vice president is Gary Lathrop. Uh, Kristen Enzi is our secretary. Elizabeth Miller is the treasurer. Our current board members are uh, Becky Winters and her, her term expires in 2022. Uh, Leo Altman has agreed to serve uh, for the remainder of the year and we may want, he may wanna be replaced come Tri-State. So if this is something that interests you, uh, it's absolutely, you know, I, I promise you a couple, maybe one evening a month, we're gonna spend a, time, a little bit of time on Zoom uh, and then maybe one board retreat uh, sometime during the year. Uh, our current program, Hearing Aid Specialist Training Program is Sandy Hubbard, uh, and our education chair is Tammy Miller. Uh, Tammy had some, uh, had some illness. Uh, she was unable to put the education together uh, for this meeting, but uh, the, your board of directors did that. Uh, and I wanna thank all of them because they did, a, I think we did a great job. Uh, we need to elect uh, one person and uh, for the board of directors. Uh, and that's Kaylin Patterson. Uh, and then we also need to elect uh, Kristen as secretary and Elizabeth as treasurer. Uh, so that will be the slate of, the slate of officers. And is, is there any uh, nominations from the floor? Uh, 
again, hearing none, I would entertain a motion that those three people are elected to those positions. Uh, is there a, a motion for that? I second it. All right, so it's been moved and seconded that uh, Kristen Enzi is a secretary, Elizabeth Miller is treasurer, and uh, Kaylin Patterson as board member. Uh, all in favor, please signify by saying aye or raising your hand. Aye. 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 Any opposed, same sign. Okay, the motion passes. Uh, then the only other thing we have is good of the order. Are there, is there anything from any of the members or anybody online who would like to address? All right, hearing nothing else um, there, I just received another message. So there's a false rumor around that there is not an actual database. It's going to be a big deal. Um, they've uploaded 100% of the vaccine records at this, at this new fire. Um, the person is on it. Uh, three came back with, with fake uh, vac vaccination records and they were fired. So there truly is a large database. Uh, so people finding out very soon. She said the government will be setting very large fines just for your information. Wow. Okay, any other questions? Terry said, have you thought about starting a GoFundMe page to raise for WHS? No, we haven't, but that's a great idea. We are going to be doing a board retreat sometime uh, early October, so we'll certainly bring that up. Thanks, Terry, for that. Anything else for the good of the order? All right. In that case, meeting is adjourned at 119. Thank you all for joining us. Uh, the auction is still open. Please, if you haven't bid on something, go bid on it. Uh, there are still a couple of hearing aids that have zero bids, so it'll give you a really good opportunity to pick up a nice hearing aid for a reasonable price. Uh, we'll see you all at Tri-State, uh, and if you have any questions for anything at any time, feel to reach out. To, feel free to reach out to any of our board members, or myself, uh, Connie, whoever. We're all glad to see. You. Thanks for all the work. You're welcome. We'll see you all later. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Good to see everybody.